Okay, welcome from my side as well, and I'm very, I'm very pleased to be able to speak to you today. I'm here basically to have a little fun with you, because I happen to have a lot of fun teaching electromagnetism for the uh, first year of physics students this spring. Uh, this all starts from uh, an experiment that I made as a, happened to make as a young boy. And today I will make that experiment with you. And we will also demonstrate one of uh, one tool for teaching, which was probably discussed already in a parallel session before this session. And it will be presented by Jani Petri Martikainen, uh, which allows you to actually vote for one experiment to be done on stage. So you will get some chance to decide which experiment we will do. And to be able to vote, you would have to, if you have, an, have a mobile phone or a laptop, please go to the website socrative.com and log in with the number 604014. By doing so, you are able to vote for the experiment. Is that right? Yes, and uh, log in as a student, and not as a teacher. As a teacher, you have to yeah, so make it so make it simple and log in as a student. And uh, yeah, just take a look. Meanwhile, you can join the presentation by uh, blowing some uh, balloons. So I will just throw you some balloons. Front, front row, front row. Attention, attention. Please help me with that. And I think that's the uh, f what fourth flow. Let me see if I can do that. Uh, not enough. I will take that closer. Blow me a balloon. You will get to use them as well. <clears throat> Okay, so those questions don't uh, make much sense yet. So let me start again. When I was uh, about maybe 12 or 14 years old, uh, I was making a chocolate cake or, of some kind. And as a part of the procedure, so to speak, to make a chocolate cake, you have to grate chocolate. So I used this kind of uh, grating tool a uh, metallic grating tool, and I was, um, I was working on, on the kitchen table, something like this, and there was uh, uh, this kind of uh, plastic board, which I used to hold the chocolate in. And then something funny happened, and I, I need someone to come on board, on, on the stage, to help me with this experiment. So any, any volunteers? What about there? Uh, Lady over there, can you join me for this? As, as a <laughs> to help me with the experiment? Because I know what happens, but uh, I guess not so many perhaps know. So please take some chocolate, don't eat it yet. Okay. <laughs> and what you have to do is just to make a pile of grated chocolate okay. on this side. Just make a big, big pile. A big pile, yeah, that will okay. be good. So I will do it fast. That would be fine. Yeah. And then you could basically lift it in this spoon. I'll take the, remove that. I can help you with that. I can mm -hmm. just take this here. And if you can, Take the board, lift it, and, and place it like this. Okay, okay so okay. what happened? You see something going on there? Can you comment? Yeah, there's chocolate is moving. Totally. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so what? what, what okay, <laughs> you can put it back. 
It wasn't exactly flying, but when I, when I was doing that, I was shocked because the chocolate was everywhere. It was all over the kitchen. I don't know if you, if you and when we, and that's basically the phenomenon that I observed. And as a, as a young boy, I had learned about static electricity. So you guys with the balloon, you can, you know what static electricity and how and you can demonstrate that with the, uh, with your hair. You know, so you have some hair. I don't have any hair. I mean, <laughs> that's why I bought the, <laughs> brought this one. So. It, you can, so, I mean, at a very young age, we learn what is static electricity. So you can probably guess that static electricity is involved yeah. by observing how the chips are flying. All right, thank you very thank much. You. So when I knew, got the news that, <laughs> when I came to know that I had a chance to teach uh, uh, electromagnetism to the stu uh, first year students in our university, uh, surprisingly, uh, I realized that now this is the chance to actually do something fun and try to resolve what, what physics are behind this phenomenon. And because I hadn't actually ever explained this to me. So I was thinking that let, let's use the students for this purpose and let them actually explain it, it to me. So what I did in the first lecture that I gave to the students, an introductory lecture for the course, I did exactly this experiment and there was one volunteer from the, from the audience. And after this, I did the same thing that I will do for you. What do you think is the explanation for the uh, experiment or, or the phenomenon? And what, or even before that, what electrostatic phenomena or or um, properties or constants or laws do you know that are related to this? So can you name any, any piece of information that should be related to this phenomenon as an explanation or somehow related to that? You can just mention something. We mentioned already static electricity. So that involves charges. Why do you think the charges Move. Yeah, so plus and minus charges would attract each other. So if they are going away from each other, we are talking about repulsion of charges, right? Of like sign. So they are either positive or negatively charged. And the law behind of that is what? Coulomb's law. So the student actually, uh, I asked them with some post-it notes what they thought was in, involved and collected the notes. And then you can clearly see that they understand static electricity even before the course. They know that the law behind that is Coulomb's law and the positive and, and the same charges repel each other. So that's basically clear. But what is not clear is that why do they fly only when you lift the board and not before that. And that was not so clear, even to me. And uh, with the students, we worked, repeated the experiment several times. For instance, like this. The question was obviously that there was something going on uh, between the plastic board and the table. So what if you take uh, metal, which is known to be um, conductive, for instance, and it will shield electric fields. What if we basically put something behind the board and the table? Can we stop the interaction? So now if I repeat the experiment this way, Can we learn something more about the phenomenon? So what if I now lift these two together? You can clearly see that nothing is happening. So
So there is this interaction between the chocolate and the board has now been cancelled. Any suggestions why? Guess something. They don't see you in the video, I think so. <laughs> Just hear your voice so you can. It's a damn foil. Hmm? It's a foil. It's a foil. Okay, so let me lift this so you can see that. What if I remove, or and this was actually suggested by one of the students. If I start taking the foil away, what happens? The phenomenon is repeated and the chocolate moves again. All right. Sorry for that. But clearly now the foil was acting like the table. But what was this force between the foil or the table that kept the chocolate in place? There was suggestions about this from the audience in the course, in the first lectures. But actually we didn't quite and I didn't explain this to the students. Actually, I didn't know the explanations. I left it completely open until the course was over. However, I was disappointed that we couldn't solve the problem together on the, on the lectures. So I decided to continue the experiment with another teaching experiment. So I put this question. Explain the phenomenon, or at least give some good drive for the, explaining the phenomena using the things that we learned in the course about electrostatic phenomena and, and laws behind that. And propose another experiment that could be done in the lecture. And this question I, I posed in the uh, final exam as one of the questions. I let the students know this on, in, uh, in, in beforehand so that they could prepare for that. Actually, they could prepare that with, with which each other. But, and the, and, and the bonus was that if they were able to come up with a reasonable hypothesis and an experiment for that, that would explain the phenomena, they could get two bonus points in the exam. However, if there was more than five same answers, they wouldn't get the bonus point. This enabled them to collaborate, but yet not distribute completely freely the, their own ideas within the, within the uh, whole course. So by doing so I got a lot of good ideas about what is going on. So you can probably see some of them, uh, maybe not. And now I collected in some of the proposed experiments by the students for you to vote. Which do you want to us to do now on stage to Try it out. Have we, do we have results already? We have a result, yes. Okay, so we have a distribution. Oh, a lot of votes. Oh, so more so votes are coming. So we have in total, we have 19 votes. And uh, the system yeah, is in such a way that I mean, you get, the teacher gets a sort of distribution of votes. And then, I mean, if I end the activity, I will get an Excel file of the results. And I mean, from this we can, for example, learn that I mean, uh, your favorite uh, experiment will be the number one, which was, I think, replacing the chocolate with, uh, with the styrofoam. Oh, right. So, so that, would be, that would be your choice. So I think by suggesting this, the student, but the students were thinking that, I mean, chocolate is something that they are not so used to, but everybody is used to what happens to when you create styrofoam, right? <laughs> So is there something special in the chocolate or is it just something that is charged like uh, styrofoam by... So let's do it. Okay, let's do it. Let's see what happens. Styrofoam, plastic. Again, can you see it? i never done this before, but it seems to be working. I mean, wouldn't make very good cake, would it? <laughs> So I think what you can see that the styrofoam sticks to the 
metal grating. So obviously now the metal has one charge and the styrofoam has an opposite starch, star, charge. Actually, it's very difficult to separate them apparently. Not so much, actually chocolate seems to be better. Also for this, not only for the cake. Okay, thank you very much. I would like to also thank the students that participated in this experiment, which was both physics experiment, but also teaching experiment. And it was a great, uh, great experience for me. What I learned mostly about this was that it appears to be completely allowed to have a lot of fun teaching <laughs> and not taking teaching too seriously. And most of this stuff I made basically by improvising with the students without hardly any planning, including this presentation today. Thank you very much. <laughs>